Hi there, minions. It's Wheezy, and today I want to talk to you about my thoughts from the Battlefield 2042 beta. It was it was good fun, so let's go talk about it. All right, minions, much like I did with my recent video on the Halo Infinite tech preview, I'm gonna roll in some clips from the Battlefield 2042 beta as I talk about this. Um, and I will also be doing other videos about Battlefield 2042 using gameplay from the beta between now and full game launch in November. Um, but I just wanted to get this video out to give an overall impressions of the beta for those of you who are wondering um, maybe you didn't play in the beta and maybe you're wondering uh, how it came across um, or maybe you're just curious what my thoughts are on it and whether or not uh, I was happy. Um, so th to start out, overall I am extremely excited for Battlefield 2042. Compared to like the Halo tech preview for instance, Battlefield 2042 feels a lot less polished. Um, there's definitely still some roughness there. Um, caveats out of the way, it's an older build, what or what, yada yada yada, the full version will be better, no doubt. Will it be perfect? Unlikely. All of that in mind, let's talk about the core of the game and what actually is going to really matter, which is how much fun is it to play. So the impression I got from the beta with all, everything, all the glitches, all the bugs, all the this, that, and the other, it was a lot of fun. I played as much of it as I could, and I, I just enjoyed all, just so much about it. I'm gonna break down the things about it. Was it perfect? No. Are there things that are that need to be fixed? Yes. Are there potentially serious issues with the setup of the game or the balance of the game? Yeah, there are. But was it a lot of fun? Hell yes, it was. Um, so let's start off by getting right into the gameplay the overall gameplay impression, um, which is that it feels really modern and solid. The movement feels really modern and and not clunky. <laughs> Going back and playing Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 really shows the age of those games, and, and especially in the way that you interact with the game and the player movement. Battlefield 2042 feels like a modern shooter. It it feels very much like the Call of Duty control scheme, the Call of Duty way of moving and playing, but in a battlefield setting, which is a very good thing for good, right, wrong, good, bad, and the other for Call of Duty. They've got their controls pretty goddamn locked down, and Battlefield feels really good. The movement feels very modern and fluid and nimble. You don't feel bulky, and it's just, it feels really good. Um, which leads into the gunplay, which... I remembered playing during there. My initial impression of the gunplay was a little weird because there's significantly less, from a controller perspective, um, not really an issue for keyboard and mouse players, but from a controller perspective, it felt like there was significantly less aim assist than there has been in previous Battlefield titles, um, where it's usually just a little bit of guidance to kind of help keep you on target tracking moving players. Um, it feels like there's almost none of that, if not actually none of that in uh, Battlefield 2042, which was initially a little strange, but when you adjusted to it, it made the gunplay feel very satisfying. It made you feel like you were actually shooting the person, and as someone who's got a lot of experience on the controller, it wasn't really that hard to kind of pick up and, and do that. And one thing it really did is it made the range of the weapons actually matter. You couldn't really rely on the game helping you track weapons to use something like an SMG or an assault rifle beyond the range that it's effective at. The recoil actually mattered, um, so you had to kind of stay in the ranges where they were effective. Um, uh, an assault rifle you could easily engage at close to medium range. Um, at longer range, if you put it to single fire, then you could get hits, but it wasn't, you know, like a gimme. Um, SMGs, you know, point blank to close range were good. Medium range you could kind of do a little bit, and then out in the distance it's like not worth it. So. The gunplay felt, I remember making the comment, I guess opening, the gunplay felt kind of perfect. Like it felt where I wanted it to be. I, I didn't get frustrated by the overall feel of the gunplay. Some of the individual guns felt kind of shitty. <laughs> um, 
Especially the DMR, like, it felt useless, like, it felt like the only range the DMR was effective was the same range that the assault rifle was effective, but the assault rifle was just better at it, and at a range beyond which the assault rifle is effective, you're better off going with a sniper than the DMR. So the DMR felt useless, um, but without getting bogged down in the details, overall the gunplay felt really, really good. Um, for the objective play, all we got was Conquest on one map, so... Not a whole lot I can do as far as getting a feel for the objectives, but it did feel very much like Battlefield in the good and the bad ways. Conquest, the objective points, still felt, it still felt very scattered. It still feels like Battlefield where you go and capture one point, maybe fight for it, go to the next point, fight for it. The fact that a couple of the captures had two points to capture didn't really change the game at all. It just felt like another point to capture. And if anything, instead of even though a lot of the fighting was centered around those two points, which were, what, C and D um, on orbital, it didn't feel like it really changed anything about Conquest. Like, I would go and capture F, because it's like, oh, they're battling, like, we have half of C, you know, C1 is ours, C2 is theirs. I'm going to go capture F, <laughs> because it's one point, and I can do that. These guys can keep fucking around, I'll go do that, and I'll come back. So, I don't feel like that really added to it, didn't necessarily take away from it either because conquest is is sort of what it is in battlefield it's more of the sandbox you go and you play the objective the objectives bring people together for fights so they're not just like a giant map where you're trying to team deathmatch um but it the game doesn't really in in any meaningful way encourage teamwork and conquest any more than it did in any previous game previous game so that's not necessarily a critique it's not a regression it's just how conquest has always been in battlefield game modes like rush or breakthrough that are going to be in 2042 that we didn't get to play with um will be that different kind of pace um those of you that can hear some sound of the background sub is out there playing team fortress 2 <laughs> so i apologize if you can hear lots of team fortressing going on out there um yeah, so uh, as far as objectives, that's all I can really say. It wasn't a bad thing. Um, some of the visibility of some of the objectives, the UI in general in the beta was very rough, so I'm not going to dig too much into the nitty-gritty on things that are going to change. I don't want to waste a lot of your time talking about things that aren't final. Um, I just want to give you impressions of, do I think Battlefield 2042 is going to be a solid game? So that's what I'm focusing on. Um, so that leads into Specialists, which is like the biggest core change in Battlefield. Instead of a traditional class system, they now have a specialist system, which is, you know, very much like Apex and Call of Duty, where you have the operators, you have hero characters that have special abilities, um, and, and that is kind of the class system. Each specialist has, like, a piece of equipment and a trait that is specific to them, which is a cool concept. I don't dislike that. Um, and I feel like the weakness in what's breaking down the class system is the way you can build your classes and a weakness in the UI, which is that because the equipment is separated strangely, where the same slot that has ammo boxes and med boxes also has your AA rockets, your repair tool, um, and your uh, and like uh, anti-armor rockets, like there's a whole lot of stuff that you get to pick one thing of. You can either pick an ammo crate or an AA rocket or a anti-tank rocket or armor. So there's a whole lot in that category that kind of like makes you get this weird trade-off. And then in the other category, there's just like a grenade or a motion sensor. So it feels like the biggest break from the class system isn't the specialists, it's the way that you can build the class. If they had one slot, that is for like your teamwork equipment, right? Where you can either p pick a repair tool or a uh, armor box. I mean, like if there's something that was one thing is team based and one thing is individual based, then that might work a little bit better. So I guess they're kind of somewhat there. I mean, the class system in the past, if you're a medic, you get an, a medic box. If you're a support, you get a support box. If you're an engineer, you get a repair tool. But now you have to choose between a repair tool and a rocket launcher, right? Like that's that's kind of a that's part of what's breaking the support system is you don't always have to choose a teamwork component. You can choose um, armor or uh, anti-air rockets that don't necessarily help your squad. 
they're just kind of an alternate weapon that you have access to. So they might be able to sort that out. But the other reason I say that I think this is a UI issue is the game doesn't show you who's carrying ammo. The game doesn't show you who's carrying health. The game doesn't really tell you where to go for ammo. <laughs> for instance, one of the major things is it doesn't tell you where to go for ammo. You don't have a whole lot of ammo in this game um, the way it is right now. And there are no on-map ammo depots that you can go and get ammo from. So I don't know how that's going to change in the full game. But the way it was in the beta, um, unless I needed to specifically take out a piece of armor or air, in which case when I died I would switch to that and then it felt awful, by default I ran ammo as my equipment. And I've seen people talk about how many people didn't run ammo because there are other better choices like armor and stuff like that. I felt like ammo was the best choice because it meant that you get to keep shooting. <laughs> like, it was so easy to run out of ammo um, that I always carried the ammo crate and because I liked using the uh, motion sensors instead of the grenades, I basically was, between the ammo crate and the motion sensors, I was carrying around UAVs with me everywhere I went. All I have to do is wait for the cooldown for the ammo box, dump an ammo box, which instantly gives me a sensor, and then I throw the sensor and I can tell who's around me, which is extremely useful. Um, is it overpowered? I don't know. I didn't feel like it made me dominate the game, but it was such a useful combination that it made me feel like if I was using anything else, I was, I was at a disadvantage. Like, choosing a grenade over a motion sensor felt like taking a chance at maybe blowing one or two guys up versus constantly having the ability to see who's around me. Um, it just felt very powerful. So equipment maybe is a little is a little strange, not game breaking. It didn't break any of the fun. Um, one of the things that I would like them to do as far as how that balance concern, is concerned is give me the ability to try different things without feeling like I'm handicapping myself. So if you want me to use anti-tank rockets or anti-air rockets instead of ammo, you're going to have to make those actually work. I get, I spawn in with anti-air rockets. I can use all three of them and it won't destroy the vehicle I'm shooting at. Same thing with the anti-tank rockets. I can fire all three of those at a tank and it won't destroy it. So it's kind of like, what's the point? Like, I get it. You teamwork, whatever. But you, do you need two engineers to take out a single piece of armor? Like, I'm talking about like rear tank hits on the, I don't know. Figure that out. Not game breaking. Um, again, didn't take away from the fun of the game. The plus system. If you guys haven't already seen my video on that, you can go check it out. So I won't dig into it too much here because I made a whole video about it. I love the plus system. It adds a new level of tactics to the game and it makes you, like I'm talking about with the equipment, makes it so that with weapon attachments, you can try them out and use them in a way that you wouldn't otherwise. As In the same way that I'm disappointed that if I want to take out armor, I have to like give up my ammo box, my ability to use my main weapon to use that or, you know, or if I use my anti-air and I'm not going to even be able to shoot down a helicopter or a jet, I have to give that up and then wait to die to get a new one. In the past, if I wanted to switch my assault rifle from something close range like a DOT to something longer range like an ACOG, I would have to die to do that. And in which case, you're not really adapting to the situation. You're like, okay, well, I'm going to stop playing up close, so I'll use a different optic. Now you can say, oh, there's a guy at longer range. Slap on that ACOG, go to single fire, pow, 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 and then switch back. Like, I love that. Realistic? No. Fun? Yes. <laughs> a lot of fun. Um, vehicles. I spent quite a bit of time at the end of the beta in vehicles, and I enjoyed them. They, it, the, the, only thing, the only thing that it kind of let me wondering is why aren't they exactly like they were in Battlefield 4? Battlefield 4 vehicles felt really good. Like, really well balanced by the end of the game. They controlled really well. The controls were predictable and solid versus what you would do in, like, Battlefield 3. Like, it felt right. It's mostly there in 2042, the way the vehicles control. Yet the, they did this in Battlefield 4 as well, but if you're like me, you switch from the default control scheme to the alternate control scheme, so you can actually have more control of the vehicle, um, especially air vehicles. And it, and it, and it, and it kind of feels like it does, but there's some weirdness, some beta-iness, when it's like, this is something you had nailed. Why is this suddenly fucked up? Player movement has gotten way better. Vehicle controls have gotten slightly worse. So hopefully that'll be sorted out. One of the weirdest things is in helicopters, the way you can move the helicopter inside the cockpit view 
is much more limited than the way you can move the helicopter if you go to third person view. So if you're in first person view, you, you have really precise control over the helicopter. And then if you're like getting getting shot at or a missile, you switch to third person view and you can like really dramatically like roll the helicopter and almost and flip it over. Like you can't do that from inside the cockpit. So it's weird that the controls are different between those two perspectives. Um, I don't know if that's intentional or not. Um, and I think that's also part of what makes anti-air launchers less effective is helicopters and stuff can do these really crazy ass maneuvers if they switch to third person view and just kind of tumble out of the way of, of rockets. So, But overall, uh, well, jets also felt terrible and useless because of the connections and stuff like that. So yeah, hold off on that as far as making a, a judgment. Tanks um, were jittery. Um, overall felt like a tank, like you would expect. As far as the vehicle, if the vehicle controls just end up solid and like they were in Battlefield 4, it'll be great. It seems like that's what they're going for. Um, they have some balancing things to do. They'll, they'll, they'll get to that. They always get to a good point. Eventually, if not directly out of the gate. That said, even the imbalances that are usually early in Battlefield games aren't typically game-breaking. Um, so, yeah, overall, the vehicles felt Battlefield. They felt enjoyable. Um, Maybe helicopters are slightly overpowered right now. I was able to go on some pretty nasty rampages uh, with those, especially if you're coming up against other pilots that aren't very good, because the best way in the beta to take down air vehicles with other air vehicles, you couldn't do it very well from the ground. Um, so, I don't know. It was it was fun. It was enjoyable. There's, there's some work to do there. Um, and then the last part that I want to talk about is map design, which, again, one game mode, one map, but you can tell a lot of thought and intelligence and gameplay went into designing Orbital. It has a great job of where the points are distributed, the routes between points, you can move through the map really easily from point to point, there's good cover, there's good routes for attacking the objectives, there's ways to use different roles, like you can shoot longer range from certain places, you can use cover to get up to closer range. The map felt extremely well designed, and extremely thoughtfully, intelligently designed which I think is a good sign for the rest of the game, especially coming out of the Call of Duty Vanguard beta, where those maps felt like they were designed by people who were stupid, have never played a first-person shooter before, and maybe just copied and pasted straight out of the campaign. So, overall, the beta was really fun. I'm extremely excited for the game. I'm going to spend a ton of time with it. I'm going to be putting out a lot of content for it. Even now, with the, the content that I captured from... Like I said, I spent as much time as I could in the beta, which isn't a lot because of other adult re re responsibilities I have to deal with. Um, but I got enough content from gameplay that I thought was good um, that I should be able to put together uh, a decent amount of stuff going forward. So maybe some vehicle-specific videos, some uh, gameplay-specific ones. Again, if you missed my plus system video, check that out. I think it's, it's a really exciting feature. So what did you guys think of the 2042 beta? Did you guys get to play it? Did you enjoy it? Uh, are the technical problems too much? What do you think? You're going to get it day one. You're going to play it. You're looking forward to something else. Let me know. If you guys enjoyed this, leave me a like. If you didn't, you can dislike it. If you're not a minion, subscribe to become one because I need all you minions. I'll see you guys in the next one.